Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video, another video here at CES 2023 in Las Vegas. And you join me with, I would say, the most anticipated vehicle uh, to come out by me. It's no secret I'm a Volvo nerd, love Volvos, love electrification. And here we are at the Volvo EX90, finally here, the first time I'm able to present this vehicle to you. This one's a non-drivable sort of display unit, but I thought I'd take you on a full tour tell you about all the specs that we know because I know a lot of you guys have actually ordered this thing. So let me take you on a full tour of it outside, inside. We're even going to meet with the head of Volvo USA Design, talk about all the little hidden Easter eggs, how the headlights open up, how they integrated the LiDAR, some of the engineering compromises that they had to make, and some of just really cool little things about it. So we're here at Luminar right now, which is of course responsible for the LiDAR unit right in here. But we're also gonna head over to Google because they're responsible for the UI in the car and there's gonna be so much that we're getting into. So consider this, at least at this point, the most hopefully feature-rich, jam-packed info video on the Volvo EX90. This is, of course, Volvo's new seven-seat electric SUV. Now, it's actually built on the same platform as the Polestar 3, both of which are not yet available on the market. Polestar 3 will launch first. I will have a video coming to you on that at the soonest opportunity I can, I promise. But EX90 is really the boxy one, the one you can put everyone inside. And it's the one, honestly, we want with dogs. It's really, you know, the right size vehicle. So let's start front to back and talk about all of the features here. Um, and I guess starting with the front, there's a front trunk under here, which I'll insert a clip of just now so you can see everything going on in there. So to open the front trunk, you just got a little latch right in there. Cool, pops open, and then let's see, uh, let's see the rest of the unlatching procedure. Aha, it is right at the end of the Volvo logo, as it should be. Very nice. And you have your Type 2 connection for Europe, a little, looks like a roadside kit of some kind in here, Velcroed in, that's really nice. Air compressor for your tire. Triangle, probably not for the US market, the largest windshield washing filling I've ever seen, but it's so smart because it always spills everywhere. So great to have the funnel to go in there. And then, yeah, just a nice wide, pretty shallow, but plenty for charging cables, little accessories, I think better than not having it at all. So props to Volvo for that. And this is probably the most genius, wow, the most genius situation. This might be to get to your 12 volt. I'm not totally sure, it's some servicing situation. Of course, when we get one, we're gonna rip the front trunk out of it to see what's under there. But nice work to Volvo for under the hood here. Front trunk is awesome. We'll talk about all the design with the head of design for Volvo USA. You can see, of course, this Thor's hammer that was really beautiful. The headlights are actually behind this. So when you turn it on, they open up. It's super cool. I can't wait to show you that. It's just, I think, really the unique design aspect of Volvo. But of course, Volvo is more than just design. Safety always comes first. I think it's why I think we all kind of like them because you just get this reassuring feeling every time you drive a Volvo. And of course, I haven't driven it yet, um, but I can only imagine that this thing is just gonna ride like a rock solid vehicle. We've driven every current Volvo product on the market and they just are, of course, awesome. So sorry to fanboy out about this thing a little bit, but I just am loving it. Wheels, 22 inches on this particular one. Of course, there'll be different options, two different powertrains. There's a twin motor and then also a twin power performance. So 402 horsepower base, 150 kilowatts, same power output as their XC40 recharge, and then 496 horsepower for the juicy one. So I'm not sure if that's a software tuned version or if it's actually a different motor, we'll have to play around with that. I believe Polestar 3 actually has even more power output and cool torque vectoring stuff on that particular one. What's also interesting about this is their dual permanent magnet motor, similar to XC40 recharge. That's a bit of an interesting situation. We've seen Lucid do this, we've seen Tesla do this, but we've seen others go with an induction motor uh, to shut off while cruising. I'm not sure if there's a disconnect on here for one of the axles. I know XC40 Recharge doesn't have it. We'll have to wait to hear more a little bit about it uh, in the future. 111 kilowatt hour gross battery pack here, so juicy size battery pack. It hasn't been totally revealed, but rumors I'm hearing about 107 kilowatt hour usable, so very little buffer on this. Volvo is going to recommend a 80% daily charging limit. And then of course you can bump it to 100 when you need. And I think that's the way to do it. Some automakers don't allow you to use, uh, you know, they let you charge 100% every day, but put big buffers. Volvo says, hey, 
Our users are smart. You bought a Volvo, you know what you're doing. Charge it to 80% or less for daily. And then of course you can bump it up to 100 when you want. So come join me down the side here. So you have front motor, battery pack in the center, of course, and it's just looking nice. Take a look at the interior. I'll show you that here in just a little bit as well. I want to talk about, of course, the sound system, reference quality, Bowers and Wilkins, tons of speakers, tons of power. Um, just that's the way it should be. You guys know Bowers and Wilkins and Volvo stuff just absolutely rocks. We'll do a full interior tour, but if you come on over here, you can take a look at the back and we'll do a design brief, but just take a look at this C-shaped headlights, this pillar right here looking fantastic. Um, trunk space is massive as well, and it actually goes really high. So I'm gonna insert a, a view of the trunk space right here. Oh, check this out. Right, that'll show you what can fit in the vehicle and what doesn't fit, right? Shows you exactly like seating arrangements, widths and distances and everything, and then all the objects, right? That is so cool. Your luggage, golf clubs, all the way up to a fridge. You can understand <laughs> what can fit inside the car. So whose idea was this? Uh, I'm not really sure, actually. That's a good question. I'll have to find out. It's really kind of cool. It's very Ikea-esque, if you will. Exactly. Super yeah, cool. Exactly. And then if we just take a look at the, the boot space back here. So will there be any underfloor storage in the production one? There is one? underfloor storage in the production one. It's actually quite deep, too. Oh, really? Pretty, okay. Pretty, pretty good amount of storage. Because the, the motor would be underneath the rear seats, yeah, so I imagine. Kind of is here. It's basically along this line, the division line. Yeah, here. some somewhere right here in that that division line. Very cool. And then we have cup holders back here, USB-C ports, rear air vents. Very important for the dogs. And um, yeah, of course, this one's a Euro spec, so you got the auto tailgate. But exactly. just like XC90, you can dump the air suspension, squat this thing to get stuff in there. There you go. Super sick. And guys, check this out. When you're sitting in the third row, headroom's always an issue for me in the last row, but look at how high the roof actually goes in here. It's hard on camera, but it actually slopes up. So really, really, really tall roof here. And I'm just, of course, loving the rear vents, the connectivity options, all really good. Join me on over here. You can see EX90 badging on the back. That's a pretty juicy one. Now, it, Volvo is going to be going fully electric uh, by 2030 is their goal, which is a really significant goal to get to. I'd be surprised if they do it as a global car maker to do it, but that's what they're working towards. Fully carbon neutral by 2040. And um, this really sets the stage as their next generation stuff. We all know XC40 Recharge is built on CMA, compact mod modular architecture. It's a com adapted combustion chassis to be electric and it's very inefficient. They actually drive amazing. I love that car but it's not a showcase for efficiency. I would be willing to bet this is probably not far off efficiency as an XC40 recharge, just my guess, even though it's a much bigger vehicle. You can see just aero designed to be electric a little bit better here. Um, and of course, drivetrain should be optimized. Battery pack should be optimized to reduce everything. So here's the charging port. You'll see this one's actually a European spec version. So it has type two, but in the US at least, it's going to support um, 11 kilowatt AC charging. And then they claim 250 kilowatt DC charging. And that brings up a big question to me because this is a 400 volt system architecture in this car not an 800 volt system architecture. CCS typically only allows 500 amps. That would be somewhere around 200 kilowatts. We've seen Rivian go up to 220 because they're a bit higher. So to get 250 kilowatts, you're gonna need a ton of current flown at this thing. And I'm not exactly sure how Volvo is gonna do that with the regulations. Now, I think CCS is gonna to start to open. We've started to see Signet units dump even more power into the cars than, uh, than 250 kilowatts. We've seen some crazy things on 400 volt system architecture cars coming. So maybe Volvo knows something we don't and they're just gonna take all the current. Of course, everything is liquid, liquid thermal management here. It will have preconditioning, it will have plug in charge. So ISO 15118 plug in charge will be available in this as well. Uh, to actually access the vehicle, be cool. I wish I could show you all this stuff, but it's really early days. You'll have a phone key that can go up and unlock the vehicle uh, and, and more included. I mean, the technology should be pretty good, should be up to current spec and um, you know certainly a little bit better adapted I think than XC40 recharge was uh, as an electric vehicle. This is really ground up. The EX90 will also support some other cool technologies that I think are interesting to note. The first is vehicle to X or vehicle to grid or even vehicle to home. Basically the EX90 will support 
bi-directional charging. It's unclear to me whether that will be on AC or DC or both. We've seen F-150 Lightning do bi-directional charging with DC. We've seen Lucid do it with AC, uh, but tons of opportunity here for Volvo to essentially look to create a network of EX90s to support the grid during times of peak usage. And I believe they'll be launching that in certain markets, but not all. It just depends on, I guess, where they're sold and how easy it will be to integrate that in with different utilities. But also, and even more importantly than V to X, will be the LiDAR and the pilot assist technology. Uh, Volvo is using a Luminar LiDAR, of course, mounted on the roof. We're going to discuss the styling aspects of that here in a little bit, but just the driver assistance is going to be awesome. They'll have high definition mapping, but also, the, the system should work on roads that maybe aren't pre-mapped because current Pilot Assist does. Just a guess. We'll have to see. But based off of everything I'm seeing from Volvo, this should be one of the best driver assistance systems with the longest range seen far deep into, uh, in, into the advance of where you're heading, as well as just great lane change control and a few other things. Look, at the end of the day, we're going to run it through our hog back as soon as I can, uh, but it's just, uh, I'm glad to see them pushing the boundaries of driver assistance systems. And then, of course, all of the sensors adding up to a safer vehicle. One thing I thought was pretty interesting was actually look at the washer jets at the end of this uh, windshield wiper here. When the wiper goes all the way up, it actually sprays the LiDAR unit. That's the way they keep it clean. So pretty neat. CES, we're, the schedule is a little bit crazy, but I want to say a huge thank you to our friends at Volvo for letting us sit in this particular one so we don't have to brave everyone over at the Google booth. They're going to let me sit in this one right here. So first of all, I'm going to tell you as much as I can feel, at least from just sitting in the car. So really nice door materials here, really nice door opening. You can see this wood trim actually has a backlit component. It's not on right now, um, but uh, it actually does light up from the back and gives you this really cool light signature, which is awesome. You can see the Bowers and Wilkins, uh, great right here, of course, always metal. It's not plastic. It is so nice. You can even see the speaker cone in there. A couple of years ago, they went from a yellow cone to a white cone. I think I like the update as well. Take a look at this over here. We're not going to adjust anything, but we're just, you can see here, the, uh, the seating adjustment point is a square. So I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work, but it seems very interesting. This one is a wool seat with then uh, a fully leather-free interior, even though it looks like some leather components. With the Bowers and Wilkins, you even get speakers in the headrests, which is pretty cool. So full reference quality, Dolby Atmos, first for Volvo in the car. I'm gonna step inside the EX90 for the first time. So this is a really cool, really cool momentous occasion. And here I am, wool seat. Whoa, feels really nice. First of all, massive headroom, massive. If you come out in here, Alyssa, just take a look above my head. It's huge. So tall people, you will have no problem in this thing, which is really great. Also, seating position feels wonderful. The seat itself is a little bit, uh, I would say, close on the sides here, but I also think like brand new product, it will give time to break in. And I love these wool seats. If I, if I got an EX90, which is really a consideration for us, I would say, um, having these wool seats, 100% the move, really love them. Steering wheel, nice shape. You can see this piano black plastic. I know it's going to get fingerprinty, but it looks pretty interesting. Um, one thing we're not able to do in this video that I was really hoping, and we might actually update you with a future video just because the Google booth is crazy, is I can't show you the full uh, Google operating system here. You can get an idea of how it looks here. So heated seats, controls, Spotify down here. It's 14 and a half inches. Really nice looking display, wireless phone charger. Not a fan of that personally. I think that takes up too much space. I call wireless phone chargers wireless phone heaters. So I'm not totally sure about that. But of course, you can have your volume knob right here. I love having a tactile volume knob. That looks really nice. And some storage under here as well. I'm not going to open anything because this one's not ready to be opened. Um, but this is all production intent, all design intent. Love the frameless mirrors around. You can see also a message bubble, SOS lighting inside here, probably some ambient lighting, huge panoramic glass roof if you peer this way. So really expansive, open feeling cabin, absolutely loving it. The driver instrument display right here, we're at 64% state of charge. By the way, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is the range. It's 600 kilometers WLTP. Uh, 300 miles is the estimated figure for the twin power, the base one here in the US. So that's gonna be an interesting one. 
You can see washer front and rear over here on the left. Nice chunky turn signals. Love the design here. It's really next gen for Volvo. Also love the shifter. It seems to be identical to Tesla where you pull down again once in drive for cruise control and then park is pushing here on the end. So I think this is the correct way to do it. Um, really nice interior cabin. What we're actually gonna do is I can't sit in the back, but we're gonna open up the rear door and uh, we're gonna be able to show you what the back seat looks like. And we'll also peer into the third row as well. So Tyler, how the heck do we open this thing? So when, when we are ready to go with this, these door handles, which are flush right now, will actually pop out open. Again, this is a very early model yep. of the X90. So we're just gonna pop this open really quick. Nice, awesome, thank you. Behind. For those of you who don't know Tyler, he's just the best guy at Volvo. So real enthusiast, you gotta love that. Take a look here in the rear seat, you can see um, you have, uh, inter I guess it slides forward and back, which is really great, so plenty of room. And uh, you can see this is how you would fold it into the third. You'll see a screen over here in the center which looks like for climate control and uh, vents in the rear, which is really important. Not only do you have center vents, you also have B-pillar vents, which is super duper important. Volvo gets it, you know, just crazy. I, what funny is I was reviewing the ID Buzz in Europe and uh, no rear vents and ID Buzz at all. And it's like, that's a family vehicle. Volvo vents everywhere. Third row, take a peek through this window or peer over top there. We know there's a ton of room for headroom and actually seemingly a usable third row for passengers as well. I'm pretty certain if we slid the second row up a little bit, I could fit in the third row, but that is going to have to wait until, um, until we can actually drive this thing and spend more time with it. Maybe a few weeks, maybe a few months, maybe a few years. I don't have a timing estimate, but the EX90 was here. Uh, Volvo didn't expect us to come in and beg to film this thing, so I'd say a huge thank you to them for letting us uh, tear this thing open, confuse everyone at CES, and uh, show this video to you. So what we're going to do next now is actually head over to the Google booth, meet with the head of design for Volvo USA. We're going to talk about all the exterior, the quirks, and some of the inspiration to this vehicle, and then that's going to be a video. I hope you guys are loving it because I just think it might be the best electric SUV to come to market. It's the one I'm most looking forward to um, because it's just cool and it's got wool seats. What's better than that? Join us now over at the Google booth with another EX90 with Nick. Hey, dude. Hi, Kyle. How's it going? <laughs> Doing well. Thanks so much for taking the time. My pleasure, man. For those of you who don't know, Nick is in charge of design for Volvo USA. Correct. And yeah. so when you're in the boardroom, when this car was in the design phases, you're really bringing our market to everyone's attention. Is that how that works? I mean, kind of. I mean, the way design phases start in general is we'll get a brief from a couple different departments and then end up executing different designs, starting with sketches, play models, and then we end up showing the proposals in the boardroom and you end up with a final product like this after a couple of years. And how hard was it to design this in your impression, if you just had an overview? Well, I mean, vehicle design in general is difficult, but luckily it's very fun, right? Like to me, it's a total dream job to be able to do these kinds of stuff. Um, these kinds of cars, especially EVs that we're going to much more with Volvo right now, we want to be full EV company by 2030, yeah. um, has all kinds of new challenges that we hadn't done before. Uh, all kinds of new uh, sensors to put in, new design features. Um, you know, one of the, the, my favorite points right here is the ultimate hammer headlight. <clears throat> and this is um, uh, something we've had on our cars for a while. It's called Thor's hammer. Yeah. Uh, obviously Thor, the god of thunder and lightning. Yep. Um, and it's uh, an image of the hammer and the lightning coming down out of, out of the hammer as well. Oh, right? cool, yeah. And yep. this showed up on our last generation of vehicles. Yep. And it was inspired from uh, earlier vehicles, 240 um, uh, Volvos had a similar graphic and it turned into the Thor's hammer. But the interesting thing about this one now is that uh, the previous generation of cars had the high beams and low beams above the hammer. Yes. So you'd kind of lose that identity at night, right? Yep. And what happens now on this one is the daytime driving lights move out of the way and then turn off and then the nighttime units turn on. So you still have that very pure signature. And that act of it moving just blew everyone's mind on the car. I, the first time I saw it too, I mean, I, I worked for the company. I was yeah. like, this is an amazing piece of design. Right? And like from an actuator standpoint, obviously like you have components in the headlights that sure. are moving. Um, is this, was that hard to do? Like it's how, complex. It's yeah. expensive too. Different department though. <laughs> yeah, we, we, nice. we come up with these big ideas and, and then, then you, try and pass it through there accounting. You, go, you guys <laughs> help us out. And yeah. uh, you know, they really, there you go. You can get an idea. Of, oh, so just cool. Moved out of the way. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Really cool. Really interesting thing here too is this is a 1.3 megapixel light as well. 
So there's all kinds of technology packed into just this one. So it's light. individual pixels projecting. Individual LEDs. Wow, exactly. that's pretty sick. If there was a wall here too, you could see that when you, uh, the car welcomes you with the actual Thor hammer projection on the wall. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's really cool. cool. Yeah. And so I imagine at least, uh, maybe it will be allowed in the US or not, but adaptive driving beam where you can do all the split lights. Exactly. The Volvos already have this, of course, right. in Europe, so that makes sense. But in terms of its sizing, how similar is this to XC90? We've reviewed many times XC90 Recharge on our channel. Our audience is familiar with that car. Is this similar in size? So the car is about five meters long. Okay. Uh, it's got a, a 29, uh, about a 2900 uh, millimeter wheelbase. Okay, the long um, wheelbase then. What's that? Long wheelbase. Yeah, long yeah. wheelbase. I mean, electric cars in general, their platforms tend to be a little bit longer because you have all the technology for the batteries a little bit lower, right? Yeah. So its strength uh, makes it a little bit longer. Yeah. It's about two meters wide, about 1.7 tall. So similar in size, a little bit longer, a little bit more trunk space in the back. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, the nose is a little bit lower. So similar dimensions, but kind of optimized because of the electric platform that's inside of it. Something to talk about on the front end yeah. too here. Um, really interesting feature here is that because the car's electric, we don't need to have a big grill in the front of the car anymore. If you right, I'm mean, noticing right? you have flaps down here that open and close automatically. Exactly, down low. yeah, so that's all active arrow at the bottom. Yeah. Um, and the entire front nose here, we've taken away you know, the massive large grill, and this is a design feature we call the shield in the front okay. of the vehicle, yeah. right? Yeah. And then offers a really great space for the iron, logo, or iron mark and the logo. Also has two sensors integrated into there. Yeah. Uh, we have a full sensor suite on the vehicle, 30 sensors overall. Wow. Yeah. Um, 16 ultrasonics, um, eight cameras, five um, radar, and one LiDAR on the top. Yeah. We've uh, reviewed some Neos on this channel that have something similar up top, but I believe this is the first global vehicle with LiDAR on the roof as standard. Right, correct. And how did this conversation go overhead? Was there a little bit of yeah. pushback? Like you want to get it off the roof, but LiDAR can see better? Because it does look a little funky. Well, um, you know, I think design is subjective in general, right? Yeah. And I think new technology is kind of disruptive by its nature, right? So this is a piece of technology I think people will end up seeing on more vehicles and becoming more comfortable with it. Um, the, the concept of having it on the roof though, the way we look at it is, Volvo in general has such a huge um, uh, stake in safety, right? And this is the optimum place you would need it to see as far ahead as possible. Sure. And the way we always kind of um, were explained and uh, engineers were telling us is that in nature, animals don't have their eyes low to the ground. They're typically at the highest mm. point so you can see like out, right? Like yeah. um, animals that uh, are searching for predators, very long necks, they can see very far away, right? Um, looking forward. So putting it there uh, gave us the optimal vision angle to see as far away as possible. You can see 250 meters away at night, which wow. is a yeah. long way ahead, Amazing. right? Yeah. And to me, you know, this, this will save lives, right? And putting it there was for the most functional uh, purpose possible. And Volvo in general, um, part of our design principles are form follows function. Yep. You know, functionality is a massive part That's of our story. Why we love Volvos, bricks yeah, exactly. on wheels. <laughs> exactly. There you go, there you go. Bring the brick back, a yeah. buddy of mine always oh, tells uh, me. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> My first car was a 240DL. Oh, no way. Yep. <laughs> That's when I was awesome. 16, I, I, I have vivid memories of that car as Rear well. wheel drive, sweet speed, there we you love go. it. <laughs> uh, so interesting, noticing the handles here, hadn't seen yeah. this before. So a little actuator in there? Yeah, it's a little actuator in there. And this is all part of our flush design strategy too. So if you look at the side of the car, Everything's really flush. There's no caps on any of the pillars here. Oh, All wow. the glazing is completely oh, man, zero it looks offset. Looks like someone just took a chainsaw right Absolutely. down the side. Absolutely. Well, we were a little more subtle than the chainsaw, right? <laughs> sure. But we got there um, either way. And so these fold down when uh, you're not driving. Aero is a huge component to this vehicle too. Anything that has to do with range um, is a big conversation for us in design. And how much does that, like obviously EVs, obviously you don't have a big engine, you don't have yeah. design, you know, emission stuff, you can get a little bit more creative with your design. Sure. Or is it more difficult because you have all of these new aero requirements that really impact range figures? Both. Okay. Yeah, so absolutely. fun and a pain in the ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Extreme job, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so, I mean, that's where the challenge of design comes in, right? Like you get these mission impossibles and you have to figure them out, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, I think we've, really succeeded here and everything you can see they just retracted and it's completely flush and every we fight for every little count with arrow right now right yep. um, the car is a 0.29 um, coefficient of drag which is very competitive uh, yep. very impressive for such a, yep. lo a large car and every little bit counts so these going flush 
the glazing going flush. The rear um, overhang is a little bit longer than the other car. Yeah, and I'm even noticing it tapers in a little bit back There's here. a lot of taper. So that's a big arrow component is the more kind of taper and the longer the rear end is, you tend to get um, better uh, arrow yeah. uh, figures. Front end is very round. And there's ways companies can do this, like putting you know all kinds of extra gadgets and stuff on the vehicle. Adds to weight, adds to complexity. Volvo, we're kind of all about simplicity and beauty at the same time. Yeah. So you get this really clean design, right? Where there's not a lot of stuff hanging off. I mean, it. I'm not a design guy, you know, I love driving stuff fast, but this, in my opinion, is the best looking electric SUV oh, I've seen. appreciate that. So yeah. it's just like, it did, because it's just simple. It's very Nordic, in my opinion. Yeah, it's well, great. I mean, Volvo, um, you know, we're based in Scandinavian design as our kind of design village, right? So. Um, simplicity, functionality, and beauty we see is kind of seamlessly working together. Yeah. Um, you know, also the the our kind of commitment to nature with a vehicle like this, we want to go zero emission. is also very Scandinavian. Materials on the inside, I think um, you'll see that too. It's full leather, free vehicle. Oh, nice. Um, uh, unfortunately, it's too bright to see right now, but the wood grain, um, the natural wood grain has lighting on the inside that comes through oh, no kind way. of reminds cool. you of like a, a warm um swedish home yeah you know in the winter nice. time everything's kind of based around the 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 uh, stove in the middle of your cabin in the middle of the woods so right? these the are the conversations element. you're having at the office all the time day. all the time yeah that's really cool. part of our dna yeah. Right? yeah let's bring our audience and show them the back because this is super unique where it's a little bit of c40s going on up yeah. here yeah i'm glad you brought that up actually so it's part of our kind of BEV strategy to have these segmented lights, mm -hmm. right? And typically the rear end of a Volvo is very, um, we have a lot of identity, right? Like yeah. you can tell a Volvo you from a long know. way away, yeah. right? So we wanted to do that here too, to where we still have this very, um, you know, identifiable Volvo signature, the C shape, and then the segmented lights at the top that are yeah, similar, good, good eye on you to notice that, like the C40. Well, I have to thank you for not doing a light bar. <laughs> I don't know why, but I have a thing. No problem. Light yeah, bars, yeah. So <laughs> looks looks great. Big conversation too, but there's functionality inside this as well. You can see there's several sensors here. Yeah. <clears throat> Camera, washing element. You have yep. more sensors down below as well. Right. Looks really nice. And then I just want to bring up this car's sister car, which I know is a different company on Polestar. But of course, I'd like that you guys kept the box. You mm -hmm. went to have cargo space. You can put dogs back here, which yeah. is really important to us. We always bring our dogs places. Whereas when you look at the Polestar version of this, it's not as much room back there, right. but might be a bit better for aero. Absolutely, well, both, right? Yeah. Um, and this is a full seven seat vehicle, yeah. right? Which is unique to, um, to uh, Volvo. Yep. Um, we have quite a bit of uh, seating capacity in there. Uh, it's, it's seats you can actually sit in as an adult. Like, yeah. <clears throat> when you get the demo later, maybe try to see if you can talk them into letting you into the rear. Yeah, I oh. wanna try out that last row in there and see what that's all about. So. Um, I guess just to kind of finish it off, we got roof rails up here. You roof can put rail. your box on the top, which is great. We got big ass wheels. 22 inch wheels. 22s, right? hell yeah. That's another um, uh, point to talk about here. It's just an arrow cover over the wheel, right? So, yeah. Um, the best kind of performing wheel you could possibly have for arrow would just be a slightly domed disc that has no holes in it, right? Right. But that doesn't allow for brake cooling. Right. It um, uh, doesn't allow you access to the, the bolts and things like that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we took all of that um, kind of thinking and developed a wheel cover that went on top. So you mm -hmm. don't have any bolts that you can see. Right. So this will just pop off. This will pop right off. Yeah. Cool. But it makes the spokes look longer because yep. they, they're not interrupted by the bolts. It's really cool. And a little kind of um, uh, Easter egg here is that as much time as we spent designing on the outside here, there's a great looking wheel under there too. Oh, so cool. if you wanted to take the, the wheel off, you kind of get two for one. And we've seen uh, vehicles that have these covers exactly. on the mountain public. People choose to take them off Sometimes. for a different style. Yeah, exactly. So that'll exactly. be really fun to play around with. Well, um, yeah, anything else we should talk about? I mean, it just seems like a cool looking vehicle to me. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate your time. I mean, if you have any other questions, I really suggest Unfortunately, we can't hop in right now. Yeah, but we'll the get interior in. is beautiful, right? Great. Full leather, three, uh, free interior um, from top to bottom, from the carpet all the way up to the headliner. We're using lots of recycled materials. Great. There's something like 45 kilograms of recycled materials in the interior alone. Wow. Um, Great. If you get a chance, sit in um, the armrests and the doors have our own developed um, material called Nordico. Oh, cool. And, um, it's a, a completely leather-free um, material, but still, you wouldn't know the difference, right? Wow, that's and, super uh, neat. Yeah, Volvo's, you know, that's all part of kind of our uh, conscious design, right? Yeah. To, to doing things not just because someone doesn't want to have leather, but, you know, the well-being of, you know, the animals that the leather 
comes of from course. in general, right? It's a yeah. choice. Yeah. It's a choice for yeah. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for the, t the tour. Our audience will really appreciate it because oh, I no know problem. nothing about design. I'm just like, this looks great or not. I don't know. But thanks for quantifying it. My pleasure. And, and all the Volvo fans out there, Volvo for life. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So and there you go. That's a full tour of the Volvo EX90, or at least as much as I can show you. We got under the front trunk. We got in the rear. I got to sit in the driver's seat. And again, all of these are pretty early prototypes, earlier than we typically play around with. I think next to come, I really want to play around with Polestar 3, bring all of that information to you. I want to talk to some of the engineers of this car, figure out how they're doing charging efficiency, why there is or isn't a disconnect for one of these permanent magnet motors. And um, really curious to see what you guys think of the Volvo EX90. Me personally, like I mentioned, so excited about this product. I think, uh, you know, it's sort of the right product product at the right time, the right styling, the right quality. And uh, of course, with Volvo trying to go fully electric, it only makes sense they started with the 90 chassis. And I'm looking forward to the smaller ones, presumably, to come into the future. So thanks so much for watching another Out of Spec Reviews video. We'll have more to you coming from here at CES. And uh, yeah, I really don't want to leave it. I just want to bring it with me. Thanks again. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.